since we've been here, we've had nothing but uh, great support from everyone, and uh, hopefully we can entertain everyone with a good game of football. Is it important to win tonight? Uh, we always come to win, don't worry about that. This is the magnificent scene at Carlaw Park this evening. A crowd must be in excess of 15,000 people have showed up for what's fast proving to be the biggest sporting event of the summer so far here in Auckland. The arrival of the celebrated Canberra Raiders preceded by some entertainment here, including some skydivers who are just dropping in on this super night here in Auckland. It's a hot, muggy evening and a huge crowd have gathered here and they're being entertained at the moment, not just by the skydivers, but the Canberra Raiders themselves. The green machine at full strength here this evening, with the exception of Ricky Stewart getting a little pre-match warm-up out in front of this big crowd at Carlaw Park. Well, Carlaw Park over the years has been such a graveyard for so many visiting sides from overseas, and this evening the Auckland team will be hard-pressed to extend their marvellous record against those international sides. As we said, the Canberra Raiders side virtually at full strength for this match. It's also very important for the Auckland team, of course, who hope to be in the Winfield Cup in the next couple of years. Well, Ken Laban, it seems almost bizarre to be talking about rugby league at the height of the summer, but to what can we expect by way of a match here this evening? Well, the 1991 season ended by Canberra's usually high standards, very disappointing for them indeed. They've They've done some very progressive buying over the summer. They've let a couple of their big guys go, Glenn Lazarus and Brent Todd, who were popular figures at the club over the last two or three years. And uh, we see a, a new look, reshaped Canberra side, determined to do well in 1992. Can you believe this crowd? Oh, unbelievable. Indicative of the uh, rise in interest of rugby league in New Zealand. Just 10 days after the Manly team played before a capacity crowd in Hastings. And now tonight, it's really got to tell the sporting public of New Zealand that rugby league really has arrived as a sport in New Zealand in the 90s. We're in for a magnificent spectacle here at Carlaw Park this evening with this huge crowd here to see one of the great sides of modern rugby league, the Canberra Raiders. And we'll be back with the Green Machine and the Auckland side and the kickoff right after this break. where the Raiders have taken the park, led out by this man, the man that probably most of this crowd has come to see, Mel Meninga, acknowledged as the best player in the world, Laurie Daly there. The only man missing from a top-line lineup in the Canberra's team is Ricky Stewart. Injured and unable to play, otherwise it's full strength. Though many have said they've got nothing to play for, but they have everything to play for in terms of the first team lineup. And here's Mike Patton leading the Auckland side out. About to defend their proud record at Carlow Park against visiting teams. This crowd is enormous. Just fabulous to see. It's a great evening for it. There's been rain in Auckland overnight and this morning, but the ground is hard and fast. Mike Patton with a big moment. This is the Auckland side, David McIntosh at fullback, Warren Mann on one wing, Mike Patton and Logan Campbell in the centres, Sean Hoppy the other wing, Dave Townsend at standoffs, Stu Galbraith is the halfback, Neville Ramsey, Phil Robards, Francis Leota, Jason Lowry, Shane Dance and James Pickering. And looking at the Canberra Raiders lineup, a star-studded side, Gary Belcher at fullback. Jason Croker, Mal Meninga, Matt Wood, Brent Mullins, Laurie Daly, Scott Gale, Bradley Clyde, Ian Gately, Steve Stone, Paul Osborne, Steve Walters, and Dave Woods. It truly is a formidable lineup. Mal Meninga, the man of the moment, and Ken Laban, I guess on paper you'd have to say, despite the huge crowd here to see an Auckland win, they're going to be hard-pressed to do it. Yeah, they're going to be tough, and that man there on the screen there, he's a colossus. Mal Meninga, probably the greatest player playing rugby league in the world at the moment. He's a superstar player, he's been in awesome form in the uh, late 80s and the early part of the 90s, and he'll lead the Raiders well tonight. They'll be very keen to get on with a big one. As they say about this Canberra Raiders side, with the size, the speed, and the dynamic power, let alone the individual brilliance, how do you stop them? They can attack from anywhere in the field. And the Auckland side can tackle their hearts out, but they'll have to do it for 80 minutes.
expect them to try and tackle them out of the game early on. But the Raiders can attack from anywhere. Yeah, Matt, playing with, they play with a lot of confidence, Tony. You'll see that it doesn't matter where they are on the park, they won't be, they won't be slow to use the football. Even the best professional sides in Australia have found that they're most dangerous when they're down. McIntosh playing it safely, but up on him very quickly indeed. I'll be waiting. He's a guy I know Ken Laban has got big wraps on, Sean Hoppy. Yes, terrific player, Sean. He was in outstanding form for the North Coast Tigers last year. He was in terrific form a couple of weeks ago at the Sevens tournament at Fraser Park in Lower Hutt. He'll be set for a big one tonight if he gets an opportunity on the outside. Expects some performance up front from this Auckland side too. A much vaunted pack. Talking to Coach Owen Wright earlier in the day. He was making the point that they've all got Auckland places to play for, as well as Kiwi places with a new coach and what assumes a new lineup this year. So they want to impress. <laughs> and they're keen for a big start here. Trying to hold Canberra down in their own end. Yeah, good pressure from the Auckland side, moving up both sides of the play of the ball, just forcing the Canberra side to play close to the play of the ball area. Dummy half runs and drives off the Steve Walters at dummy half. Big question is, can they maintain this kind of pressure on Canberra for 80 minutes? Most good sides can for 60. It's the last 20 that tells against the pros. Vanega setting stuff up immediately. Just a few nerves there when it came out wide. But they'll get their act together. Don't worry about that. Brett Mullins, the speedster, who couldn't hold on. That was a good kick from Scott Gale filling in today for the uh, for the injured Ricky Stewart who's sitting in the grandstand helping with the Canberra running today. He'll have a big weight on his shoulders too, Scotty Gale. Yeah, got big shoes to fill. Ricky Stewart's a marvellous player for New South Wales and for Australia on their recent tour of Great Britain and France. And that's Scott Gale's opposite number there, Stu Galbraith. Townsend, another with a big task at dummy half. Try and dictate terms for Auckland. The workaholic, Neville Ramsey. A man who, if he was bigger, would probably be an international loose forward. Francis Leota getting into the game. Up on the halfway mark. Early stages yet. Auckland trying to keep the ball moving. Logan Campbell. Great run from Campbell. great individual tries and no more marvellous way to start the 1992 season for Logan Campbell than a brilliant individual solo effort by the centre playing you know, he hasn't had much experience with the Auckland side but he ran onto a wide ball from a from a forward on the outside of the play of the ball area and finished it off in fine style we pick it up there on the Uta Ripples replay Logan Campbell a big step off the left foot stepping inside Ricky Stewart watch him turn Melmaninga inside out here shapes the pass steps back off his right foot Turns Melmaninga one way, then back the other. Sees, puts his head down, goes for the line, shows the ball down underneath a couple of tackles. That's a marvellous try from a terrific player, obviously in outstanding form. That support from Mike Patton didn't need it in the end, but what super individual play. Yeah, that was a terrific ball that he ran onto, and that great step off the left foot to beat Laurie Daly set it up for himself. Loads of space, loads of time, shows great vision and good skill there to show the ball. Turns Melmaninga inside out again there on the Eater Ripples replay. Terrific player and gets through underneath the diving, despairing tackle of... Looks a little like Morvan Edwards, in fact. Now look at the extra points from McIntosh, flagged away. It was well worth the admission price for that marvellous effort from Logan Campbell. That'll really set the scene and a good platform for the Auckland side to be able to play off if they can continue this this form of pressure and this level of intensity throughout the match, they'll be in for a big chance of getting a result that they want. Logan Campbell, the 20 year old. My goodness, what a try, what a superb individual effort. Keep an eye on him as I'm sure Canberra are going to be now. This bloke here, James Pickham, had a huge year last year. Met well there by the Canberra reception party, but he was a terrific player for Auckland at the end of last season. Shane Dance, the hooker. Trickering, waiting. 
Full robots. Galbraith zipping and diving. And keeping it alive. This is Neville Ramsey. Well tackled in the end by Meninga. But Auckland trying very, very hard to keep it alive. Townsend. Belcher, as always, is safe. And they're up and caught in pretty quick, too. Yeah, that was a good attacking run from Gary Belcher and a terrific effort in defence from the Auckland captain, Mike Patton. Good ball and all tackle. Canberra trying to make their way back to halfway now. They'll want to retaliate fairly quickly. Broker, the speedster out on the wing there. Jason Broker. They won't want to give him a yard to move in. Both wings for Canberra, very, very fast indeed. Mullins on the other wing. This is better running from Canberra. Dave Woods can't quite get it up, and it goes back Auckland's way. Play on, says Bill Shrimpton. So, Auckland back in possession. But an indication of just how dangerous the Canberra side are. They can break out from anywhere. Yeah, very similar side to the Auckland side, who traditionally have always, always played wide-running football, as you know, Tony. And really, with the way that both teams have started, it's indicative, I think, of the sort of match it's going to be. You can expect a lot of passing and a lot of wide-running, and I suppose you could also say there will be some mistakes later on in the match. And with 20 players apiece, they can do a fair amount of interchanging to yeah, keep, that, keep fresh players coming on. Exactly, and that'll help maintain the pace of the game as well if they're used well. Sort of a line kick. Dripping along and making 25, 30 metres. Yeah, it was well judged too by the Auckland player there who managed to pick Gary Belcher on the wrong side of the post and kicked to the side where there were no defenders from Canberra to be able to support the kick. So the scrum to go down. Midway 22 and goal line, Canberra territory. Canberra with a big front row. Woods, Walters and Osborn. Bill Shrimpton not happy with that. Bringing the mark in. A lot of untidy work at the scrum, which is indicative of the fact that the Auckland side must be contesting. And then, Tony, that's a good sign as well. It's a heck of a Canberra scrum they're against. But as I said earlier, this Auckland pack is much vaunted. Belcher, well caught. Hoppy onto him quickly. Some of these young Auckland players very, very anxious to mark their uh, opposites who are big stars. They want to show them up if they can. Yes, they will, Tony. And essentially, they're representing New Zealand tonight the Auckland guys and they're well aware of that and they're playing like the 10 foot tall too it's been a marvellous start by them pass going back a little blind there Belcher up in the line this is Daly Daly showing some of his running skills one of the best running standoffs in the game yeah I'll tell you what he was up to against one of the best cover defenders in New Zealand rugby league to a little Stu Galbraith he pulled off a marvellous tackle just a couple of minutes ago to pull down the Canberra speech to Jason Croker on the wing and you watch little seven, number seven, Stu Galbraith, as, Stu, as Daly gets around Francis Leota there. You see Stu Galbraith just come into the picture, goes down. Great tackle there by Stu Galbraith, forcing him over the touchline, and that'll be a scrum Auckland feed. Now, I noticed that um, Daly limping a little as he came back there. Don't think it's anything that will worry him seriously. Ramsey. Very seldom lets the ball go in that situation. The Auckland captain. Robards expect a big game from him tonight too. Dance goes left. They push it through. And on to an equal Brett Mullins, but he's caught. Good tackle from Shane Dance.
Canberra standing all in a bunch here. The Auckland side lined out, standing really quite flat. Yes, the early wind is starting to take its toll on both sides there. And the Canberra side just being forced to regroup and hit the ball up one off the play of the ball area. They'll settle it down for a while like good pros before they try and open them up like a tin of beans. Daly again. Flex at that time to Matt Wood. Wood's covered well. They, like Auckland, will want to keep the ball moving. McIntosh safe. Meninga and his opposite number, Gary Belcher, up on him. So just a couple of metres out from their line. Dance. Yeah, it's Auckland's turn now to bunch a little bit around and play the ball while they try and conserve a little bit of energy, complete a set of six and improve their field position with a good kick. A lot of enthusiasm from the Canberra side now. Obviously disappointed in the manner in which they've started the match. They'll be very keen to get on with it. Francis Leota having a charge. Goes the kick. Belch is under it. And running it back. That's a halfway line. Belcher. Looked a little high from Galbraith. Tackle had been made underneath. Galbraith came over the top. I think he's going to get ping for it. Yeah, the referee's already indicated that the penalty is going to go in favour of Canberra here. A little Stu Galbraith, a little halfback with the old short man's disease up around the shoulders. Referee well placed to adjudicate penalty to Canberra. So that's out. Almost on the 22. Canberra with a chance now. It's big Paul Osborne who played with St George last year, um, having his first year with the Raiders. That's a rule that was introduced at the beginning of the 1991 season, whereby the rugby league authorities ruled that it was illegal now to strip the ball and the, uh, the Auckland hooker there, Shane Dance, presented with the ball and ripped it off the Canberra player. Well, big charging run now. Canberra side looking to get in. Dave Woods with a big charge, push back. And the Canberra player was claiming that an Auckland player ripped the ball off in the tackle. However, the referee was well placed. That was a good decision. So the scrum is just three or four metres out from the Auckland line. Galbraith comes away with it. McIntosh waiting. Shrimpton unhappy with the tackle. So it'll be McIntosh for the line. Galbraith's got a problem with his boot, but they're not going to stop for that. So 13 minutes gone in the game, Auckland leading 4-0. They've opted not to kick for God, they've opted to tap and run, so they're obviously here with an entertainment focus tonight, which is terrific for the big crowd that's here. Yeah, I guess a, a side that has a record like they do of scoring tries, they're going to want to score some here tonight. A good hard ground, a big crowd, entertainment, standing well in the tackle there. James Pickering, uh, and unable to hold it coming through. Is Jason Lowry. Yeah, fatigue's been put down to uh, the fact that, um, you know, heavy pace of the game. Tell you what, some mean old tackles going in there. Yeah, well, obviously, to win at Rugby League, Tony, as you know, you've got to dominate around and play the ball here, and it's really where the tough get tougher that decides which way the result will go in the end. And particularly with a side like Canberra. If you can tie them down, try it. Game being played at terrific pace so far. Meninga with a little short pass there. Matt Wood, he gave it to. Wood was caught. That's five. And the touch judge is in. Touch judge has seen something in there. Just having a word to Bill Shrimpton. See who the offender was, did you? And a little bloke's two goal break has been called out by the referee. Again, as we approach that crucial 20-minute mark with a little bit of fatigue setting in and a bit of frustration setting with the fact that only one try has been scored. And you'll see here Matthew Wood, the Canberra centre, 
Goes in, is confronted by three defenders. Two Galbraith is the third man in. Keep your eye on him. He's the man being singled out by the referee. He goes down, and the touch judge picks up the fact that Stu Galbraith put a short arm in just off camera. Didn't look too nasty, but he's been pinged for it anyway. So Canberra with a real chance to get in here. Can they push across the line? Just held up. Inches short. They'll spin it wide. Drop pass. Bad pass to nowhere. Bradley Clyde brings it up. Well, some of the Canberra players not terribly happy with the decision, but it's coming back, and the scrum will go down five metres out from the Auckland line. Big pressure being put on Auckland now. Defence holding not too badly. Trying to bring it out of their own ground now, up to the 22 line. Ramsey upended. By Daly. Looking to go wide. Decided to go back inside. Auckland not making a lot of progress there. They're a couple of metres outside the 22. Galbraith. Bounces kindly for him. And that's the halfway line. A yeah, wise decision by Stu Galbraith there. He didn't have the Auckland numbers back there ready to advance the football, so he opted to kick early on the tackle and improve their field position. It was a good decision by Stu Galbraith. Stu Galbraith, the man who uh, had some interest shown in him by Illawarra. That didn't come to fruition. So he's, luckily for Auckland, still here and playing for them. Oh, nice wide pass from Belcher up on the line. Back inside. Nicely placed that time to Brett Mullins. And luckily, Ramsey was there to catch him quickly. He's a 100 mile an hour run of that fella. Daly trying to get him over the top. The Matt Wood. Auckland almost split open then. Paul Osborne going up the middle. Two metres inside the 22 there. Daly, little short pass back through Meninga, and to Belcher, back to Daly again, he puts it out to Wood, Wood's trying to get the pass away, has a go himself, held up just short of the line by Ramsey, Neville Ramsey having a fabulous game of defence. Goodness gracious, what pressure. was in but he's given it to them Steve Walters let's have a look at it again yeah you're looking at a player that's regarded as probably the best rake playing in international football in the world is this man Steve Walters Queensland state of origin player hallmark of his play is his running from dummy half and on that occasion with Melman Ninga at dummy half he obviously knew with Melman Ninga playing the ball that he had an opportunity to be able to um, sneak on on the fact that they'll concentrate on Meninga when he goes down the blind, goes down low, a 50-50 decision there, but the referee ruled that the ball went down prior to his body making contact with the touchline. You saw the look on Dave McIntosh's face as he was pointing to the linesman. It's out, mate, it's out. The try has been awarded. The scores are even, and a chance now for Canberra to go ahead. been an injury suffered to one of the Auckland players in the scoring of that try, Tony. A uh, winger Warren Mann is in a great deal of difficulty. Yeah, big loss uh, if he does have to come off and he doesn't look too good at the moment, does he? He's going to rejoin the team while we're waiting for Melbourne Inga to see if he can add the extra points. It looks to be out to the left and they've put the flags up. Well, I'd like to see it again. It looked as if it was out to the left of the post. The flags are up. Canberra go ahead, 6-4. Norman Inga, the 31-year-old, veteran of 32 tests for Australia, 23 state of origin matches. 
And there's Warren Mann. Looks as though he will go off after all. Get some attention. Plenty of spares. The likely wing replacement, either Andrew Arkoy or um, Matthew Tuisamoa. Look at the strength of that man, Bradley Clyde. Again, we see Steve Walters making valuable ground from the dummy half area there before turning the ball back inside of Bradley Clyde. Larry Daly, Daly doing his standoff job very, very well indeed. He's been everywhere. Trying to get the passes going. Trying to keep the ball alive. gone and Canberra leading by two six to four Leota one thing about the Canberra defense is they certainly haven't let up in the intensity level since the beginning of the match they're still hitting hard high end in numbers Beckering dance waiting Auckland again, spinning it wide, but not really making any ground, standing flat. Not running onto the passes. No, they lost 10 metres there from the play of the ball area. They won't, they won't be too pleased with that. So that's the halfway line. Auckland finally managed to get out of their pass. Dance picked it up. Again, now we're starting to see unforced errors because of the fatigue factor now as we into the, the second part of the first half there. A basic turnover there to the Canberra side. 50 metres out, they can do anything from here. Their back line's set and deep. They're going to have a go from the scrum. He's back cleanly for them. Daly misses out Meninga. Again, the halfway line. Raiders on a raid. Steve Stone there, number 11. Looking it wide. Meninga looking to set something up. Bradley Clyde running onto it at good speed. Well caught. Good tackle, Francis Leota. You never ever stop this Canberra momentum. You can only ever slow it down. And so many sides in Sydney have discovered in the last few years. Gee, they really use the football well, this Canberra side. They seem to have a lot of time and always got numbers when they decide to spread the football. McIntosh under that. And again, they finish off that set of six with a good chase underneath that kick. They'll be determined now to try and keep Auckland in their own quarter. Being held down on the tackle. So Auckland come away with the advantage from that one. Dave Townsend looked and opted to hold it. Again, unforced errors. Try to recover from it though, Auckland. Phil Robards. They'll tidy things up. Neville Ramsey there waiting. Pickering. Using him to do the donkey work along with Jason Lowry. Yeah, and he hasn't been found wanting either, the big bloke. He's been there when it's been his turn to run, and he's done the hard yards for the Auckland side. Wouldn't it be great to play in a side with somebody like Belcher behind you? Oh, he always picks it well there. You know, I think one, only one time in about six kicks so far, they managed to catch him on the wrong side of the post. But other than that, he's been able to anticipate and read the Auckland kicking game well and been right there to take the ball on the full on every occasion. Fabulous player, Gary Belcher. Yeah, Vet veteran of 13 tests and 15 State of Origin matches. 29 years old and doesn't seem to be flagging at all. The age doesn't tell. There again, Mel Meninga's 31. This is Wood. Proving a little hard to get down. Gets the pass away. Belcher. He gets his pass away. Meninga. Yeah, this short ball passing game is terrific. The Canberra side keeping the ball alive. This support play on the inside is terrific. That's the 22 metre line, Auckland Territory. 
They just like a juggernaut when they get going. Daly back inside to Meninga. They still have a fabulous understanding. And Belcher gets the try. Nice passing. Great understanding between Daly and Meninga. And Belcher, as ever, there in support. Right man, right place, right time. Oh, no doubt about it. Class performer, Gary Belcher. He, he began the act himself on the on back in the first tackle of the play of the ball area and he was there we catch here either ripples replay laurie daly came from the open side back to blind took the players across with him turned the ball inside to mel meninga mel meninga with a brilliant flick pass to that man gary belcher to go in on the tackle of his opposite number dave mcintosh and score a terrific try like i say he managed to anticipate and read the kick of the auckland team at the beginning of the set of six you see laurie daly go across turn the ball inside to mel meninga he manages to stand in the tackle offload a nice short ball nice right foot step from Gary Belcher to score a terrific try for the Canberra Raiders. Gary Belcher, the 29-year-old, as we said. Not all that big at six feet tall and 91 kilos for a fullback, but what a fabulous career he's had. Oh, marvellously elusive play, magnificent play, and he's thrilled a lot of a lot of spectators all around the world, and it's great to see him maintaining that sort of enthusiasm in his game here for the people at the ground tonight, Tony. Originally came from Brisbane Souths. And now Big Mel with the chance to put some more on the board to make it 12 to 4. Certainly that one's straight and true. The flags are up and it's 12 to 4. Canberra leading with 28 minutes gone first half. Reaction to uh, Mel Meninga's second successful kick. You would think that they were all here to support the Canberra Raiders. They, they, they really have treated the, um, the visit as well. Yeah, and they gave Mel Meninga a great reception with that second successful kick. Judging by the number of green shirts in the crowd on kids, I guess a lot of them are here to support the Raiders. Mixed loyalties. I think they're just happy to see a marvellous spectacle for, uh, for rugby league and a couple of class performers in on the act. Oh, good running from Walters. Eventually caught by Lowry. And he's injured. sensing that the tackle perhaps uh, was a little over the top it didn't look that bad at the time like we said earlier a hallmark of this man's play here steve walters this is running from dummy half we see jason larry coming in for the cover tackle he goes in high well there wasn't really anything in that i think obviously uh, the camera guys are quite happy to try and get um, try and get a rest and a bit of recovery here we see steve walters as he busts the tackle of um, neville ramsey and we see jason larry coming and he goes goes high well, I think he really come off the shoulder. And the referees ruled it that way as well. So Walter's coming off. Sad loss, but they've got 20 players here. Pass going astray there. Uncharacteristic mistake from Canberra. Auckland perhaps starting to bustle them a little. Let's hope for the sake of the spectacle it doesn't turn into frustration and nastiness. <laughs> Coming Auckland's way. Galbraith to Townsend. Loses it. It's Hoppy in fact. Losing it forward in the tackle, so the scrum goes down just on the halfway mark. <laughs> Daryl McDonald is on the paddock, number 16, replacement for Steve Walters. One thing the Canberra side is very good at is sit set pieces or set sets of six from set play and it's really been a hallmark of their play in the last couple of seasons and uh, they've got some marvelous individual performers on the side and they try and lay a platform early in the tackle count for their big name guys to come into their own on play four and play five and every set of six scott gale and he's got a nice easy runner off him in dave woods didn't quite come off And often have stolen possession, much to the delight of the crowd. Play 
Logan Campbell, they're not going to let him have any space again after that try in the opening minutes. See the Canberra hands coming over in the tackles, ensuring very effectively that Auckland doesn't manage to keep the ball alive. Something they are very good at doing themselves. by Tom Rolls, replacement player for Canberra on the paddock. Mike Patton, almost in a gap, caught by Meninga. Yeah, there was a bit of, little bit of heart ruling the head there from the Auckland team as they got a little bit excited. They may have been better at just to put a kicker in at first receiver and just put the ball into the end goal and try and force the Canberra side to kick out from their own end goal. Rather than getting caught at the end of the tackle count, Cardinalson. Yeah, that man there, Ian Gately, is having his first game for uh, for the Canberra Raiders tonight as well, Tony. He played last year with the Parramatta side and previously played with Manly in yeah. the Winfield Cup. He's changed from an eel to a Raider. Pass was forward by the look of it. Referee saved by Burns and Crowd hates that. Well, you heard the boos from the crowd. Certainly a look forward. Daly. Going astray. Stolen by Auckland. Back again. Let's look at this again. a new player for Auckland, Matthew Toussaint Moore, who's replaced the injured Warren man who went off earlier with a suspected broken arm. Tim Sheens, the Canberra coach, has injected a couple of fresh forwards into the Raiders side also to add to some enthusiasm, add some enthusiasm for the side as they approach half time. You wonder about the compromise of continuity versus fresh players. Yeah, again though, Tony, they're professionals. Um, the Canberra side operate off a $1.5 million salary cap and they expect their players to perform no matter what the circumstances. Like this guy, Darrell McDonald, the kick and chase. Darrell McDonald, he was sensational for the Canberra Reserve Grade side in the grand final last year and has been one of the young up-and-comers that they've brought up through the under-19s and under-21 grade and they've got big wraps on this kid next year. What, of course, uh, Canberra have had to do, having lost so many players and only bought four back, they've uh, relied on their sensational reserve grade ranks to supply the top grade this year and to fill in a lot of the gaps. Big chance for a lot of the guys. Certainly they deserved it on last year's performances in reserve grade. Yeah, and such, so professional have the Canberra Raiders outfit been, Tony, that their reserve grade team really has been, um, has been raided, to coin a phrase, right through the summer ranks by every club in the Winfield Cup. Hoppy there, the ball out, just as an indication. Uh, the end of 92, they lost Paul Martin, Brent Todd, Jason Gregory, all the Gold Coast, plus Mark Bell, Brent Boyd, Nigel Gaffey, Glenn Lazarus and David Barnhill. That uh, makes a, a bit of a hole in your, your playing ranks. And Tim Sheens would expect no less of the blokes that he's got on the park today either than to repeat the efforts of um, some of those star-studded names that you mentioned earlier, Tony. In return, they bought uh, Paul Osborne from St. George and Gately from Parramatta, Phil Blake from Norths, and Dave Woods from Newcastle. And the rest is coming out of the, the ranks of reserve grade at Canberra. The 17 there for Auckland is Kennedy Taogaga. Normally plays as a prop. Another interchange. Yeah, and that man there that just pushed the player off, Bradley Clyde, who's regarded by many to be the next captain of Australia. He played for um, Australia as a 19-year-old in the second row. He's still only 22 years old, and he's set to have a marvellous career in the Winfield Cup. Well, the desperate save there from Dave McIntosh, the Northcote player. Yeah. 
That's the 22 meter line in Auckland Territory. Oh, lost ball. Costly mistake from yeah. Tui Samoa. Yeah, especially when you cough the ball up against a side like Canberra in your own quarter. And it was only the second tackle. They could pay dearly for that top ball. And he's in there very quickly to try and make amends. The tackle on Belcher. But Canberra, you'd expect to be able to capitalise on this. Good tackling on Woods. They spin it wide this time. Meninga. Bradley Clyde up there. And nicely set up. Oh, good push over from Brett Mullins. The speedster winger, Brett Mullins, comes from a, a long history of rugby league. His dad, Bill, was a premier player for East in the mid-70s. Got the right pedigree. He's only 19. Yeah, the mistake earlier, three tackles back by Matthew Toussaint. Well, they're paying for that now. As Canberra traditionally, they set up to play on the third tackle. They had Bradley Clyde running off Mel Meninga. Brett Mullins, that player there, was in sensational form in the Winfield Cup in 1991. Copybook way to finish for a winger on the end of the line. Went over in the tackle of two Auckland players, but kept his head fine. We see here Laurie Daly at first receiver, picks up Mel Meninga. Look at Bradley Clyde coming around on the outside, calls loudly for the ball. Bradley Clyde takes out the last of the cover defenders and gives Brett Mullen all the work to do. He sights the line, goes down underneath the tackling of a couple of Auckland players to finish in sensational fashion. Great effort. Said to be one of the fastest wingers in Australia, Brett Mullins. And uh, he looks like he's got all the skills to go with that as well. Yeah, I think many people that caught the television New Zealand coverage of, uh, of the Winfield Cup towards the end of the 1991 season will well remember some of Brett Mullins' traditional runs down the Sydney Football Stadium sidelines toward the end of the season. He was in magnificent form, and it's great to see a young player like that continue that form. And he'll be very pleased with that effort at the beginning of the 1992 season, which is going to be a very important one for him. The Canberra captain and the Australian captain, Mal Meninga, with the extra points, and he's right on the button today. 18-4. to four. Yeah, the big bloke's got a big smile a mile wide on us on his dial as well he's pretty pleased with that effort given some frustrating time he had with the goal kicking in the uh, halfway through the 1991 season he's in terrific form right on half time just a minute to go so 18 to 4 Canberra leading Auckland right on half time and just an indication of the efficiency of the mean green machine one mistake one missed tackle one coughed up ball inside your own half and they're going to make you pay yeah and at, at this level of football tony that's exactly what it should be as well no mercy in terms of the uh, opportunities that you get to score when you put in that position to score you should score strong run there from tom rolls on a roll Another player on, Sean Rubisan, for Canberra. All of these high numbers, the interchange players, looking to try and cement a place in the Premier side. Daryl McDonald's not going to do it with drop ball like that. Let's see how well Auckland can capitalise. Dying moments in the first half. Down 18 to 4. Tayogaga. Again, all of the substitutes that have been interchanged on by uh, the Canberra coach Tim Sheen's really starting to uh, earn their money now with some good effort in defence can't get that ball back Jason Lowry uh, and that's the third tackle the Auckland side have been caught behind the advantage line that's a good effort from Canberra being well wrapped up so Logan Campbell decides to kick and chase you got to get up early to beat Gary Belcher with that kind of move though the perfect positional fullback they left that one behind. Again, here we see on the replay that Gary Belcher plays the ball to Brett Mullins. It goes in between his legs. Doesn't look to have propelled forward, but the referee ruled that it has, and it's a good opportunity for the Auckland side to cash in. Big chance now for him to do it again. Stewie Galbraith is through. Stewie Galbraith just running out beside the run. Zaps in the little wee gap. He caught yeah, we talked about it earlier about what happens at football at this level if you make a mistake close to your own line. We saw 
best you two, Samoa make a bad mistake near her zone line a couple of minutes ago. And on this occasion, from an untidy play of the ball area, we see Stu Galbraith, he feeds the ball to the Auckland scrum, wins it himself, goes from the base of the scrum, manages to step out of the tackle of a Canberra player and run around under the post, loses his boot at the same time. But gee, going right on the half-time, but that try couldn't have come at a better time for the Auckland side. We see it again on the Eater Ripples replay. Stu Galbraith coming in from the end of your camera, steps out of the tackle of Bradley Clyde and goes in around under the post to improve the field position for the kicker and put the ball underneath to give Auckland a valuable eight points with the kick to come. Stu Galbraith, uh, normally a North Coast Tiger who was in outstanding form also in the 1991 season and he'll be very pleased with that with that effort. I'm sure it was a frustrating time for him uh, leading up to this season, whether or not he was going to join Illawarra or what the position was, but uh, really he'd be well pleased with that effort. So the extra points there, and they are there for Dave McIntosh. 18 to 10, right on half time. That is half time. Certainly an indication of the way the game has gone. Canberra lead Auckland, 18 to 10. Start from half time. Canberra leading Auckland, 18 to 10. Sensational try to Stuart Galbraith, right on half time, brought Auckland back into the game. They could have gone into the break at 18 to four down. Yeah, that'll give them a lot of confidence too. You know, a very important try, an important part of the game right on half time. That'll give them a good lift and set a good platform for them to get a good start in the second half. You got the signal. Yeah, the Auckland player there, Kennedy Tonganga, took the ball up trying to improve the field position there for the Auckland side. Watch him, he takes an exception to the tackle and lashes out with the hand there. That was a dumb penalty by the Auckland player in position of the football. Fairly silly place to have one. Kennedy Tonganga. Yeah, well, six players of the board of the Canberra side, 20 metres out from the goal line. Bread and butter stuff for them. Auckland will do well to hold them out here. See what uh, Canberra do with their six tackles. Yeah, he's a great player too, this Paul Osborne. He's had a terrific start in the first half for the Raiders side. Been responsible for the majority of their go forward. Mark Lowry on that for Canberra. Daly coming back this way. Belcher looking for space. Well caught. Down in the corner. Seven or eight metres out from the Auckland line. Can they hold them out, Auckland? Certainly bustling, and the quick hands didn't work for Canberra that time. So it was only a miss by a whisker, though, for the Canberra side. They had numbers, and they opted for a short ball game down the blind side, but they, they couldn't control it, and Auckland came up with possession of the football. Neville Ramsey again has been very industrious for the Auckland side tonight, Tony. Very busy around to play the ball area. Always a worker. Super defensive player. As I said earlier in the game, I guess it's only his size that has kept him out of continued international football. Yeah, again, the uh, Canberra side have started the second half with a great deal of intensity. And um, they've moved up in numbers both sides of the play the ball and contested every tackle and have forced the loose ball so they can get position close to the Auckland line. Chance here for them to do something. The crowd loving that tackle on Big Mel. Clyde. Woo! Can't make the yardage. Three or four metres short now. Coming through Gale. Daly. Daly decides to go back inside. Belcher and Daly have a wonderful understanding. Mullins puts it back. Belcher again. Walters. And they still keep the ball alive. Pressuring the Auckland line. Tom Rolls trying to take it up. The Auckland defence holds. Yeah, the Canberra side just happy to work a lot of variations around to play the ball area and be able to maintain pressure on the Auckland side. Mullins, the speedster flicks it up to Mel Maniga, Maniga makes the line. An indication.
demonstration of the strength, the power of the superstar. He's an amazing athlete in, uh, in any sport, this man there, Mel Meninga, captain of the Queensland State of Origin side, captain of Australia and captain of the Canberra Raiders side. He's been in awesome form in the last couple of seasons and it's terrific for New Zealanders that they get an opportunity to see this great player live. We see him there running onto an inside ball off his wing of Brett Mullins and there's just the power and momentum of the man. There may have been an indication that he riveted over but his momentum clearly took him over the line. We see the Uta Ripples replay towards the end of this play. Mel, Mel Meninga throws a long ball, follows his pass around. Again, the ball goes out wide to Brett Mullins on the wing. He stands up, stands up the players there, shows the ball, goes inside gets held in the tackle, turns the ball inside to his captain, obviously calling for the ball, and the big colossus, Mel Meninga, over for a sensational try for the Canberra Raiders. Already in Shane Dance's tackle, but you can't stop Mel Meninga that close to the line. See if he can add the extra points. 22 to 10. Just three minutes into the second half. He had a habit in the Winfield Cup last year, Mel Meninga, when uh, preparing to kick, kick the ball is that he would say to himself a number of times before approaching the board, the two simple words, black dot. I don't know if the, um, he still does it this year, but if you can keep the viewers at home, if you keep an eye on him, you might be able to pick up one of the habits of one of the world's great athletes, Mel Meninga. Tense concentration. Easy breathing there. Just a couple of steps. Watch the flags, it's away to the left of the posts. Marvellous effort from uh, Mel Meninga though, he'd be feeling a little bit of fatigue after putting all the work in to score the try and then try and convert it himself as a big ask. Score remains 22 to 10. Five minutes gone. Again, Auckland have to kick the ball off so Canberra get another set of six and it'll be an opportunity for them to complete the set and put a good kick on the end and improve their field position. So the Auckland side can expect more pressure and more intensity from this Canberra Raiders side. But you guarantee now Tony will go up another level. Just watching Mal Meninga marshal the troops there to get everyone in position. He used to be just a great player. Now he's a great player and a great captain. Unforced error there from um, Steve Stone. Number 11 for the Canberra side who was in their reserve grade grand final as well last year and a great tackle by uh, Neville Ramsey. Auckland with a little chance here. To Samoa. Eventually hauled to ground by Tom Rolls and Mark Lowry. The handling error is starting to creep into Auckland's game. That one not quite so costly for Mark Riley. And the crowd urging Auckland on here. They're inside the 22. They want some blood. Mike Patton trying to bust his way through. The Canberra defence equal to him. They go out left again. They want to keep the passes coming back. Keep the ball alive. Not a lot of direction in it though. Neville Ramsey. Looking to straighten things up. Still keeps the ball alive. Francis Leota. The 10 metres short, Auckland. The crowd absolutely desperate for them to get some points on the board. Racing back there for Canberra was David Firma. That was a fantastic set of six from the Auckland side there. They were under intense pressure even though they had the benefit of better field position. But still they managed to maintain their composure, complete the set of six and at the end, Tony, they put a good kick into the end goal area, contested it, now they forced Canberra to drop kick the ball out from their own line, which means the Auckland side get another crack at the um, Canberra line. Would it be nice to be a fly on the wall at Owen Wright's team talk at halftime? But this Auckland side has come out fired up, playing more intelligent football. Tagaga. Ramsey tidies up again. Trying to get his hands free there. Well wrapped up. And again, the error that time from Mark Riley. To Samoa. Matthew to Samoa trying to find a way through. Loses his headgear in the process.
And Auckland again with sustained pressure. Galbraith puts the kick through. It comes off a camera player. Can they get possession? Yeah, one of those penalties that are unfortunate in rugby league where the bounce of the ball came, came off one Auckland player and landed it in the position of another Auckland player that couldn't do anything about it to get out of the way. We see the kick there. The ball comes forward off one Auckland player and it gets touched by another Auckland player who tried to contest the football and the referee, good decision offside. We see in the end of the Eda Ripples replay there, the ball going forward off Sean Hoppy to Neville Ramsey. Neville Ramsey's the player offside. Certainly worth a try from Stu Galbraith. A little stab kick through, just came off a Canberra player's knees. Yeah, the huge crowd here too, willing the Auckland blokes on. Tony, there's a great atmosphere at the ground, it's full. It's a sellout, it's terrific promotion for rugby league. I'll tell you what, I've covered a few matches at this ground, and I haven't come across an atmosphere like this, other than at a test match. Yeah, there's not enough seats for the crowd that are here, it's a marvellous spectacle. And all credit to New Zealand player Dean Lonigan for pushing this promotion. He's worked hard and stuck his neck out. And the crowd have come in for him. As Canberra make their way back up to halfway. Almost through a gap. And the Auckland defence scrambling. As Canberra get into their half. Gale. Kick down. Bouncing there, picked up by Hoppy. Hoppy will run it back. Yeah, not been that many opportunities for that great young player there with a good future, Sean Hoppy. So Auckland now trying to fight their way out of their own half, just over the 22 metre line. Shane Dance. Certainly he's worked hard. Auckland trying things with long passes, but not running onto the ball at any great speed. Yeah, gee, they're playing with a lot of confidence too when they shift the ball like that in their own quarter. That's indicative of a side that's playing with a lot of encouragement. Well in position that time, Dave Furner. Brings it back. And we're 10 metres inside Canberra's half. They want to improve the position from here. Daly with a hand in the air. Mullins, can't afford to let him get away. Gets the pass away though, and another. The ball being flung around wildly here. Meninga tidies up. Runs across field, trying to link up with support. Now they go back the other way, Daly. Oh, what a turnaround for camera. That's the halfway line. Turning a mistake to advantage. Gee, they're a fantastic side to watch when they're really when they're really on a roll as Canberra side there. You can see them there throwing six or seven passes together with these. Always got numbers, always got support play. Obviously their communication and their organisation is absolutely first class. And you get the impression that they could lift it another notch yet. They've certainly paced themselves well in this game. They've been able to lift the pace when they wanted to. Mullins. The Aucklanders becoming well aware that he's a danger man. Walters. Mullins again. Midway 22 and goal line, Auckland Territory. Camera with a big chance for attack here. Go wide, Meninga. Meninga steps out of one tackle. This is better play from Canberra. And a surprise in the handover. Canberra, look, Canberra really looked to be setting something up there. Yeah, I think the pace of the game really starting to tell on the uh, on both sides, particularly the Auckland side there that was forced to do a lot of adjustments in defence. Hard luck. 
Can you hear the crowd? Again, another crucial error. Richie can put down a fatigue and the Canberra side well rested. So again, a classic chance to attack. There's the 22. Flinging it around, plenty of support. Canberra will straighten it here. Switching direction. Making it hard for the Auckland defence to anticipate. And making yardage with each tackle. Walters, just a couple of metres short. Knocked yeah. over, last tackle. Daly. Meninga trying to flick it on. They lose possession anyway. Hoppy's he's got it. He's up and going. Can't get his hands free. It was last tackle anyway for Canberra. And now they've got to contain them. In their own half. Auckland again. Keen to keep the ball alive. Keep flicking it round. Logan Campbell. Nobody knows much about this young kid, Logan Campbell, but he really has been in fantastic form for the Auckland side tonight. You see here, there, puts his, puts his foot down on the gas there and manages to kick away quite comfortably from those Canberra players, just taken in a desperation tackle over the sideline by the Canberra replacement, David Ferner. Gee, this kid, Logan Campbell, he's set for a great future in rugby league, Tony. Good tackle by Ferner, but just look at the acceleration of this guy. Player of the future, Logan Campbell. Tackle that time from William Po Ching. Junior Kiwi last year. On as replacement, number 20 for Auckland. But running it well this time. Canberra giving a little space. Steve Stone showing a yard of pace. Finding holes in the Auckland defence. Meninga, slow setup, Very, very deliberate. They've lost the ball. Auckland come up with possession and six tackles. Can Auckland maintain this pace? Galbraith. Well, I tell you what, the pace is starting to show with Canberra as well. Yeah, it's certainly having the um, Auckland side there. That's a smart move by Shane Dance, the hooker, often to kick early on the tackle count, improve their field position and be able to save a little bit of the gas of the big guys. Well chased, Mike Patton. Daly. Let's see the runner. Well, Laurie Daly's been a lick man. Now he's showing what he can do when he winds up the legs through Meninga to Walters. And it's looking like a runaway as they keep changing direction. And going down for Canberra is Steve Stone finishing off what is a classic Canberra move. That's what they did to Sydney teams. And that's what they did to Auckland. Yeah, again, you're looking at one of the class sporting sides in world sport, the Canberra Raiders of Rugby League from New South Wales, the Winfield Cup competition. And probably there's no finer 5'8 in the world than this man, Laurie Daly, who ran hard, took the ball off, first pass off to play the ball area there, steps off his left foot to beat Francis Leota, inside ball there to the great captain, Mel Meninga, who picks up Steve Walters, backing up on the inside like all good hookers should do, and he again turns a switch pass to Steve Stone, he finishes off stepping out of an easy tackle from William Poaching to put the ball down in a terrific try, one of the great tries you'll see in 1992. This man here, Laurie Daly, no more popular man in the Winfield Cup than Laurie Daly, goes out, gets a call from his captain, Mel Meninga, to turn the ball back inside, there it is there, Mel Meninga picks up Steve Walters backing up on the inside. He does all the work there to finish off with an inside pass again to Steve Stone, who walks away from a simple tackle for William Poaching. That's a fantastic try in rugby league. And Ken, that is classic Canberra Raiders. It's the sort of stuff that they're made of. It's a hallmark of their play. And uh, that's why they're reputed as probably the most potent attacking side in world rugby league. Deep in defence, looking like they're down, and they just turn it around. And they do it to professional sides. They do it to the Sydney sides. As Ken has said, it's become their hallmark, as it has become Mel Meninga's. He adds the extra points easily. 28 to 10. Steve Stone, the man who scored the try. 
and he's becoming part of this team and seems to fit in so well. Laurie Daly, Mel Meninga, Gary Belcher. They are just a fabulous side. And we're midway through the second half as Galbraith starts. Well, how do you counter a side that can attack from so deep in the field, that can turn stuff round on you so quickly with sheer brilliance? It's simple, Tony. You don't. You just compete and you try and contest at every play of the ball area to try and get yourself in a position where you can put them under some pressure and score some points yourself. You know, a marvellous team like Canberra who don't have any weaknesses, a professional side, and can really turn the tricks on when they want a very hard side to compete against. Funny, I remember a few uh, Sydney coaches saying the same thing last year, don't you? How do you counter them? You don't. You can only ensure that you've got a good attitude with the way that you play yourself, that you complete your own sets of six, you get good field position, and you can test at every single play of the ball. It's the only way you can give yourself a chance, and hopefully you can catch them on a bad day. back but couldn't to Mark Riley well caught so they lose possession so now Canberra 12 metres inside their half and running it back out solidly the park an absolute picture a huge crowd enjoying a wonderful spectacle and I don't think they mind that Auckland are getting beaten because they're being beaten by a stylish side playing fabulous football. Mel Meninga, the little chip over the top, will it bounce for him? It doesn't. Luck of the draw. So his opposite number, the Auckland captain, Mike Patton, picks it up and tidies up. And Auckland with another chance now. I'll tell you what, there's been no player that's given more than uh, Mike Patton, the Auckland captain tonight. He's really led from the front. He's been there to do the hard stuff around the middle of the play, the ball area. He's had a hell of a job marking the big man, Mel Meninga, and he's come up trumps. He's had a terrific game, Mike Patton. He can, he can be very pleased with the terrific effort that he's put on. Auckland trying things now. They know to bridge the gap. They've got to try and break this Canberra side open. Yeah, Still well... When you've got forwards like that kicking the ball on a four tackle, they're really looking to pull something out of the bag, Tony. Certainly it doesn't seem that the consistent percentage football and moving forward yard by yard is going to help them. That man there, Ian Gately, he's done a lot of hard work around the ruck area for the Canberra side. I'm sure coach Tim Sheens will be pleased with him. He'll certainly stiffen up the Canberra side around and play the ball area. They won't lose anything not having Lazarus and Todd. Excellent kick. The interesting thing is that the skeleton of this Canberra side, Belcher, Meninga, Daly, Walters, Clyde and Stewart are still there. And it seems that they can fill the holes in and still have a wonderful side capable of winning the Premiership. Oh, exactly. And it's an understatement really to say that Tim Sheens is astute. He's a very, very clever man, the Canberra Raiders coach. And um, he'd be in no doubt whatsoever what sort of material or what sort of buying power he'd want to stiffen up this side. Good running again from Sean Hoppy. <laughs> Sean Hoppy, he scored some marvellous tries in New Zealand rugby league on television. That could very, very fast to play with great potential. He'll be a Kiwi before the uh, not too distant future. He, along with Logan Campbell, the impressive young players in this side. Patton running onto the ball. Well caught by Scott Gale. Pickering. Had a tremendous work rate in the first half. Home left Auckland. Riley. And again. A little kick through from Shane Dance. Covered well by the Raiders. 
And one thing the Canberra Raiders do do when they're in trouble, they do the simple things well. When they decide to run from dummy half or when they decide to take the ball up, they are very, very effective at it. You see here now, 20, 30 metres they've made with only one or two passes involved. Again, they're so good at executing the simple things in football. And they're so efficient at maintaining the momentum. They just don't lose, lose forward speed unless it's a deliberate act to go across field. And look at the yardage they've made inside that tackle count. The kick, Patton picks it up. They're up there to contest it. And suddenly Auckland are back inside their corner. With all the hard work to do to run it out again from here. Yeah, one thing the camera side have done tonight is they've maintained the intensity at a consistent level right throughout the match. Great to hear the huge crowd too, Tony, urging the Auckland side on and begging them to score a try. I'm sure they'd love to see it. Neville Ramsey with a chip through, almost bounced kindly for him. Back in there, David Ferner. Picks it up for Canberra. And the Auckland defence scrambles to catch him. Canberra just relentlessly pushing on. Every tackle, making the yardage. Yeah, young David Ferner, there from the Canberra side. His famous namesake, Don Ferner. We don't know what the relationship is, but um, certainly Don Ferner had a great influence in the way that this Canberra side has turned out in the last couple of seasons. And the crowd going crazy here, urging Auckland on. It's deafening. You can hardly hear yourself think here. Auckland, what a try. I don't think they'd even mind if Canberra won the game. As long as they see a man in a blue jersey scoring a try. Yeah, well, there's such a marvellous atmosphere at the at the ground, Tony. It's full to capacity. A couple of great sides that have turned on a magnificent spectacle. It's a credit not only to Dean Lonergan, but for the Auckland Rugby League as well. It's been a great spectacle. Still that very high intensity in the Canberra defence. Pickering again. Ranging out wide. And using his size well. 28 to 10. Canberra lead Auckland. 12 minutes remain in the match. More intense running now from Mark Riley. Little chip over the top again. Well read. They've got to keep trying it, Auckland. Yes, they've got to be inventive and creative with the football. As soon as they get a sniff of some improved field position, they really do have to go for it. The point's down on the board. Not a lot of time to go left. And really, they, they do. They've got no, no choice, really, Tony. They've got to try and do something with the football. All credit to them for not just shutting up shop. That isn't going to work either. Screaming down the wing. The camera, Brad Mansfield, loses it. Let's have a look at that again. Yeah, they're an awesome side. Whether they stay closer to play the ball or whether they go wide there, we see the head of it, Brad Mansfield. Shows good leg speed there to get away from the Auckland defence after running onto the end of a good pass from his captain, Mel Meninga. Brad Mansfield, the 23-year-old. His second season for Canberra. Another of those players that will admirably fill the gap of the people who left. <laughs> They're a very versatile football side too, Tony, the Canberra Raiders. We see here Mel Meninga has been, re has been replaced in the game with 10 minutes to go and his replacement is the usual loose forward Bradley Clyde who's gone out to play centre. They have the ability to alter their game to suit the opposition. They have the ability to read opposition superbly well. So last desperate chances now for Auckland. The crowd still urging them on and still hoping, anticipating that they will get a try against this great Canberra side. 
28-10 down. Time ticking away on the board. Tayagaga can't get through there. The Canberra defence has tightened up like a steel trap as Auckland try and get more inventive. Shane Dance again with a little kick through. Doesn't come off for him again. Coming back at them, Brad Mansfield. They just keep on keeping on. The ball's still alive. What a great way to use your six tackles. Oh, they're terrific. You know, they back up, they support, they throw long balls, they throw short balls, but all the time they've got huge numbers supporting on both the inside and the outside of their passes. Oh, a little rough treatment on Paul Osmond in there. He's had a tremendous game since he came on. Yes, you've got to accept that there's got to be a degree of frustration from the Auckland side as they, they feel the pressure of being points behind on the scoreboard and time running out there. And we see there one of the Auckland players makes a half-hearted grab for the ball, but professionally on Paul Osborne to let the ball go and uh, grab the penalty for the Raiders' side. Osborne starting to look just a little tired coming from St George. His first season for Canberra. And by, by tonight's form, a hell of a good score for Canberra. Yeah, it's been a great effort from... Oh, back close to the line. Canberra want to get another one or possibly two in before the game comes to a close. They've certainly entertained the crowd. Scott Gale trying to go all the way himself. Looks up to get the pass away. It's covered. Steadies it. Looking up for the passes again. Still keeping the ball alive. Caught a little off balance. Steve Stone looking for his second try. No way through there. What will Canberra do now? No way through either for Ferner. Oh, just unable to hold it. Hard luck for Brett Mullins. The speedster on the wing. Coming through well, and it would have been a nice try, but he's knocked it on. Yeah, the Eater Ripples replay. Paul Osborne, who's a noted ball player, throws a terrific ball out to Brett Mullins, but uh, really he should have been able to control that and score the try comfortably. We see there the long ball coming from the former St George captain, now a Canberra Raider, Paul Osborne, and the winger Brett Mullins fails to control it. That's an ordinary effort from him. Not having the greatest of games. Brett Mullins. And on his form tonight, Tim Sheens might have a few stern words to say. Fabulous player by any other standards. But in this Raiders side, he can't afford to make mistakes. His Auckland counter-attack now. Trying to race back at them, Sean Hoppy. Can't get the pass cleanly. Hard luck. Yeah, it really has been the story of the Auckland performance tonight. They have at times looked absolutely brilliant. It's just been a last pass or a last bit of misunderstanding there. We see here a great inside ball from Dave McIntosh to Sean Hoppy, who shows again great speed and great elusiveness, but trying to pass the ball and the tackle back to Dave Townsend, and the ball goes over the sideline and allows the Canberra Raiders team to recover comfortably. Just over five minutes remain in the game. 28 to 10, Canberra lead Auckland. On the Canberra corner. They'll run it back out steadily. They make the yardage each time. Ferner. Ferner certainly looked impressive since he came on. Auckland now with a task to contain them. They certainly aren't going to hold them in their own half. That was the halfway line just going past it in. Slipping over is Daryl McDonald. Ian Gately, hard charging run. And just look at how quickly Canberra have made the yardage. That's the corner line. They've Their taken 40 metres off Auckland in four tackles. Yeah, their ability to advance the football sensational, isn't it, Tony? And they've done it all game long. Spills out at the crucial moment. So a bit of a let off for Auckland there. 
See what Auckland can do in the way of yardage against this Canberra defence. Yeah, great contesting from the Canberra side there. Very professional, working hard at first and second mark area there and managing to keep the Auckland side pinned close to their own line. Well, every picture tells a story and you can see the yardage that Auckland are not making as opposed to what Canberra just made inside their tackles. So Auckland looking for the opportunist stuff now. Mullins picks up the ball from the chip crew. They're up on him quickly. That's the halfway line. Good running again, this time from Brad Mansfield. He gets it wide to Walters. Walters still gets his pass away. Bradley Clyde's out there looking for support. Opts to take the tackle and straighten it. Standing behind him was Dave Woods. See, how many times have we seen Steve Walters backing up for crucial passes on the inside this evening as well, Tony? He's been terrific, hasn't he? Little pass out there very very nicely and a fabulous try to Jason Croker finishing it off with a pass from David Ferner and making it look so so easy again the Canberra side being able to cash in on um, on a kick on the end of the Auckland set of six here we see the Eda Ripples replay David Ferner there manages to stand and offload a beautiful ball to Jason Croker steps off his left foot to go inside a couple of Auckland players and goes in on the tackle of Mark Riley. The Eda Ripples replay brings you all the action on the Aussie League on two as we see a couple of long passes being thrown by the Canberra side. Look for the big play being made by David Ferner, the replacement player. There he is running beautifully into whole turns. Offloads a great ball there to Jason Croker. Steps in off his left foot, goes over in the tackle of Mark Riley. Great play, Jason Croker. The extra points... If they can be added. David Ferner, the man who uh, pushed the last pass out very, very nicely. has had an excellent game since he came on. Let's see now if they can add the points. Ferner, having set up the try, trying to add the extra points. And he's flagged away, and so the score is 32 to 10. A couple of minutes remain in the game. Back from here, beginning to leave, but they have certainly been entertained. My marvellous running football, inventive play, and sheer professionalism. The skill, the pace and power of this very professional Canberra outfit has been a pleasure to watch. I don't think even the most parochial here will mind the fact that Auckland are losing the game as they undoubtedly will. They've been entertained. Yeah, they certainly have. Their, um, you know, the Canberra Raiders are the, the equivalent of the Lakers or the Chicago Bulls in basketball. They are to rugby league. They are a marvellous football side to watch and they really are a professional and entertainment outfit. Ian Gately tidying up. 12 metres inside there, half Canberra. Again looking to make the yardage. They appear to have slowed things down just slightly, having control of the game. But they still relentlessly make the yardage. Ball lost forward. Auckland possession and perhaps their last chance to do something here. Perhaps their last chance just to close up the gap a little for the crowd that have supported them so well. Can they break this defence? The Auckland players as well they might, starting to look a little tired. Pickering running it up. What a great game he's had as a workhorse. Excellent try by William Poaching. The pressure sustained long enough till finally something cracked. But Canberra still have control of the game. 
Yeah, James Pickering there as we pick up the Eater Ripples replay. Their managers to get a great ball. There's a real hint of a forward pass there. Oh, that's, that's 10 yards forward. That pass from James Pickering. But still, William Poaching won't be denied by referee Bill Shrimpton. The course for the play to go on. I think that's a decision based on emotion. And a very happy one that's been well received by the crowd. We see at the play of the ball area, the ball goes eventually to Neville Ramsey who runs across field and picks up James Pickering coming back on the inside who beats the tackle of Paul Osborne shows great leg speed there again fends off a ball and all tackle from there yeah that ball's a mile forward to William Poaching however referee Billy Shrimpton rules, rules to play on and a great swallow dive to win the match don't they say the uh, the pass is never forward until the referee blows his whistle. <laughs> William Poaching, last year's junior Kiwi, coming up to the senior grades. And I'm afraid that that is the end of the match. The referee has had to call the game off. While you were watching the replay, the spectators have invaded the park with a minute or two left on the clock. And so that's the way it will finish with Canberra Raiders controlling the second half of the game and winning by 32 points to 14. All out of watch live. It was real hot. Uh, well, we tried our best. They played the better football of the night. You know, they were the better team on the night. I, I guess that indicated the score. But, you know, we tried our best and hopefully next time we might be able to do a little bit better. Well, Tim Sheen, uh, given the fact that it was a pre-season match this evening, you must have been pretty pleased with the, the slick way your team operated tonight. Yeah, I was. Um, we were a bit rusty in defence and uh, fell off a few tackles, but due credit to Auckland, they, uh, they're a strong side. And, um, uh, you know, our, our guys were really tested there on a, n a number of occasions. And uh, But, you know, our... Our ball movement was good, and with a lot of changes, it's difficult, particularly I probably had you know, three people in each position on the night, but um, I was pleased with the way they sort of fell into it, particularly the new fellas. They look surprisingly fit, considering it was so early in the year. Yeah, well, we put a bit of extra time into it this year, particularly the big fellas, to uh, make sure that uh, our start to our season was strong, because we've got Penrith followed by Manly, followed by uh, Brisbane in the first three games well you know we've just got to do well in those three games uh, so we can't afford to be slow out of the blocks as it were so we've, we've worked hard on our, our fitness well Mel Meninga it was a marvellous exhibition of uh, football out there this evening you must be very pleased with the way your team played yeah very happy with the way we played and you know our first game of the year against a very committed Auckland side and they never gave up but all game is proven by their last try there so um, we need that you know we need to get a hard one going because we've got a very hard, tough schedule in front of us were you surprised at the intensity of the Auckland side tonight? No, not surprised. We knew it was going to be very hard. You know, I've been here a number of occasions before playing against the Auckland teams. And uh, yeah, the last one was here was 89 when they beat us, uh, the Australian side. So uh, we knew it was going to be very difficult. We knew there's a, a lot of guys on their side uh, trying to prove something tonight. It was very important for Auckland Rugby League that um, they perform well tonight as well you know, for the future. And I think they did that. I and mean, the crowd was tremendous. It was a tremendous atmosphere and full marks to the Auckland people for supporting the game. Well, full marks to you, uh, Mel Meninga and Tim Sheens and the Canberra Raiders team. We've thoroughly enjoyed having you here in New Zealand and on Channel 2. Thank you for coming. Uh, our pleasure. We'd like to come again someday. Thank you. Channel 2 has more league action next. The week's top game and a look at the table in British League on 2. Then, Kiefer Sutherland stars in the Bay Ball. First up in tonight's all-night movies on 2.